Good evening, wonderful people, great beer friends, wherever you are. On the face of this very planet we call Earth, we welcome you to hopefully another expositorily explosive broadcast this very evening. I say good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night to some of you. Because I do know that people are listening to us right across the entire 24 time zones on this very planet. If you don't have your pen and paper ready, you will be doing yourself a great disservice. We have come here to lecture, we have come here to enlighten, we have come to tutor, we have come to debate, we have come to exchange ideas and views, we have come that we may become better people, we have come that the freedom of Biafra, freedom for Duduwa, freedom even for our son, freedom for the middle belt may become a reality in our time, given the inevitable precipitous collapse of the damnable zoological republic. We have come that we may bear witness to the everlasting kindness of the Most High Chukukika Biyama Biniwe. We have come that Biafra may be ushered in in our time. We have come that those who have been enslaved, held down in bondage, may be set free. This evening, I welcome each and every one of you. I do recognize, of course, that for some of you, it could be your morning, it could be your afternoon, and to some of you even, it may be your night but all of you are listening the whole world is listening anytime we are there if you go to abuja now there is silence everywhere people are listening rapturously and attentively to this very gospel because here we speak the truth the whole truth and nothing but the truth here when we appear darkness flee here when we speak the truth it reverberates right around every corner of the zoological republic when we speak on this very platform the whole world takes notice because they know we are not relenting they know we are ceaseless they know we are determined and they know that biafra must come in our time i welcome you from the bottom of my heart and as i do so i will also encourage you to welcome those who are around you especially those that have speaker systems those who are making it possible for other people to be able to listen to this very broadcast and as i am coming on air of course because there are some breaking news which i will go into immediately i finish my introduction my name is Nam de Kano. i am the leader of the indigenous people of biafra and by the very special grace of Elohim Chukukika Biyama a servant of the wonderful people of Biafra, we are going to go into our program today. Should time permit us, we may go slightly interactive. But for now, let us commit all that we are, all that we are doing, and all that we intend to do into the hands of the Most High Chukukika Biyama Benigwe. Abasimbong. The same Tamona that our ancestors used to worship, Olisa, Benigwe, we must pray. Today I am going to pray in English because I know a lot of people are listening and we must do the best we can to commit all that we are unto the hand of the Most High Elohim. Let us pray. Our Lord, our God, our Father, Almighty, who art in heaven. In the past, you have delivered your people from the hands of the Janjaweed. They came into the land of Biafra to pillage and to conquer. 300 years ago, they came with their armies. We had nothing. We had no army then. You were our army. And you halted them at the plains of Edoma land. You returned them to Zaria from when they came in defeat, depleted and in shame. You afflicted pestilence upon them. 
You sent down swarms of fly to invade their camps and inflict them with sleeping sickness. That very Janjaweed army was destroyed. But in this day and in this age, this 2020, they have come again. They have taken over 400 of our villages. Our so-called traditional rulers are now giving land to people who do not mean well for us. Our politicians have capitulated. Our public commentators have turned to traitors. But we have thee and only thee. Because you have made Biafra the head of nations insofar as Sub-Saharan Africa is concerned. Because you proclaim to us that even a people that we do not know will come to pay us homage. As soon as they hear our voice, they will obey us. They will submit to us. All the criminal elements shall fade away. Even those who are frightened away because of the truth that we preach will emerge from the hideouts because you are Elohim, and you live forever. For blessed be thy holy name. Let this God of our salvation be exalted because it is you who avenge for us. It is you who are fighting for us. Because as they descend down in the land of Biafra with their army, their police, with their full and terror, so heavenly father, so are you decimating their populations in the Sahel. As they come to kill our fathers and their mothers, today they are burying their own fathers and their own mothers. Because it is only thee that avenge us. All those who come after us shall be subdued. You have delivered us from the hands of our enemies. You have lifted us up right above everything that our enemies could ever muster. You have delivered us from the very violent man. For today, Buhari is dead and buried in a shallow grave in Saudi Arabia. Abakari that came after him is also dead and buried in a shallow grave. Somewhere that is unknown because we know that whoever was buried in Abuja was not Abakari because the person was bleeding profusely from the head. Therefore, we shall give thanks to thee. Even among the unbelievers, even among those who bow down before graven image, because in the land of Biafra, we shall worship thee and only thee, and I proclaim it loud and clear, there will be no worship of idolatry, no graven image in the land of Biafra, because it is your holy land. You blessed it. And we shall sing praise unto your holy name. You will deliver us from the hands of our enemies and you will show us mercy because only the anointed IPOB to lead this very charge of freedom and unto our children and their children and their children's children until the end of time as long as there is a Biafran on this very earth Heavenly Father your name shall be exalted it shall be praised it shall be honored now and forevermore we pray he said he said he said, before I go any further, I want to read out a breaking news we are getting today. I am reading out this very news for zoo newspapers and the proprietors of television houses and newspapers. I am reading out this piece of information for the benefit of the British High Commission. I am reading it out for the benefit of United Nations mission to Nigeria. To Nigeria, as a matter of fact, I am also reading this very news out for the EU to take note. I am reading it out for all men and women of goodwill, all people of good conscience, to bear us witness when the time comes, because the provocation is becoming unbearable. We have not done anything to these people. We are not armed. We are not agitating violently. All we are doing is to propagate this very gospel of redemption in truth and in every honesty but from left and from right our enemies are conspiring with our conquerors so to speak those who have come from the sahel to do us harm those who have come to islamize us those who have come to fulanize our land people due to should i say political patronage people in search or in want of money People who are looking for relevance, 
All these criminal elements have combined together to serve the interest of the Janjaweed Fulani in our land. And this very evening, there is a man called Ezedeni Sihanyi. Ezedeni Sihanyi. From Isiaya village in Soma, local government area, in Aba, the very staunch, the very strongest base of Biafra anywhere on this planet is Aba. This man connived with the Janjaweed that he's serving, he's a Fulani agent. Because he received information this evening that the zoo police, without warning and without provocation, came with their Hilux vans. They came into our land. They came into our meeting ground in Isiahia zone in Aba, in Abia Central Senatorial Zone, and have arrested many IPOB family members, including some women as well without provocation these are people who are putting boko haram and their terrorist groups through schools giving them everything governors in the north are paying bandits they call them these are full and the terrorists but in our own land a traditional ruler is inviting full and the police to come and arrest our people and the police came and they arrested I, i'm sure that the whole world can bear us witness all these catalog of provocations Arrest after arrest, killing after killing, we've all kept quiet. Playing the good people, playing the children of um, God, playing to some extent those that say so, playing this script of um, being very peaceful. We've been doing it. They've been provoking us. So I want the UK government to listen very carefully. I know the UN is also in Abuja. I also know for sure that the u.s government is in abuja as well the u.s mission to the zoo nigeria you are all there and some of you are listening this very evening we have not done anything to the police you can see all the provocations i am also sure that proprietors of these papers in the zoo are aware of what is going on we have not done anything to these people we are holding our meetings quietly and in peace and they Fulani controlled Nigerian police will come into the venue of our meetings to arrest people. It is from this man, Eze Dennis Inhani. He is the one that arranged it. Do you see how our land is breathing? As one brother wrote two weeks ago, he said that there are saboteurs everywhere, there are traitors everywhere. But there is one unique thing about an Igbo traitor. That an Igbo traitor is is mad that there, there, there is an infusion of madness into the treachery of an evil man when an evil man decides to be a traitor there is something unique about it other people are uh, of course they betray their own people but not as as should i say not as um damaging as obtains in evil land this man is actually a traditional ruler and he's given land to Fulani. A traditional ruler, but he wants to bring in Fulani into our land to take us over. A traditional ruler. Maybe his children will benefit. Uh, perhaps in the next two or three generations, his family will produce the first M.A. of um, Osisioma. They came, they arrested people. He invited them and SARS to arrest our members. People will not talk. Those who will call me behind the scenes to say, oh, please calm down. Don't insult elders. They won't see this now. They won't hear it. When our own madness starts, they will start, they will start looking for who to call. This very man, if you know him, you tell him. And I'm saying it so that the whole world can hear. I, I'm giving him till 6 p.m. tomorrow for the release of all those people or else you people will hear his story the same way you'll be hearing the story of people in all of uh, the so-called cult in Oba. so shall you hear the story of this man then you see hang because enough is enough this nonsense is too much we will now begin to set example with these people that thing that will happen in the year 2025 and when it happened in 2020 that thing that will happen it happen let all the idiots who will come to phone me to tell me oh please take it easy they are elders all this rubbish tell this fool this is a Dennis Hanyi that I am going to set an example with him and I will damn the consequences. 
I will damn the consequences and I will deal with this idiot. I will deal with him. That he may know. That all of you stupid idiots giving land to the Janja weed may learn. Sars in Aba, you are now running all over the arresting. Now that you're provoking us, all the newspapers in the zoo, Nigeria, they're all quiet. Nobody's saying anything. Provocation after provocation. Fulani, they come into our land, they go to our forest, they rape our mothers, they abduct our daughters, they build their settlement. Nobody's talking. Everybody's silent. You've all gone deaf and dumb. The day I give the order and we rise up, you start complaining. You start grumbling. You start complaining. But now you're doing all these things. Nobody wants to take note. Go and tell this is a Dennis in Hanyi. Anywhere he is seen, he's in very big trouble. Let him surround his place with all the full and janja within the whole world. And I'm warning every traditional ruler in Biafra land, I don't give a damn who you are. Once you invite Fulani into your community from today onwards, you are a gunner. From today. All of you selling land to Fulani, when I mean Biafra land, I mean all the way from uh, to from a banke, from a banke to Bakasi. From Ogoja, from Ogoja, all the way to Obobo. We are not leaving any stone unturned. I am warning you tonight, any village we find a Fulani settlement, the traditional ruler of that village, the PG of that village will be in very serious trouble. This nonsense is, is, I think, because we allowed every idiot is now uh, looking for money, looking for way to survive, and you think by selling your people to the Fulani is how best to do it. This very idiot is a Dennis Ihani. You are a dead man walking. I'm saying it to the whole world. So everybody, can, I don't care what the idiots say. I don't care what you make of it. When they come into our land and they rape our mothers and cut our daughters into pieces, you say nothing. It is our responsibility to defend our own people. And we know all their games. This idiot is going to be in very serious trouble. That I can assure you. They will here there and I'm back because when it happens, you know I told you so. All of you, from today, every we are going to catalog all those 400 villages where there are fallen settlements. All their traditional rulers and their president general, you are all in trouble, all of you. Ndoshi. Criminals. You want to sell our land to Fulani, so Fulani will come and take over our ancestral land, the land of the ancients. The land of the ancients. You want them to come to our land and take it over. And when we are holding our meeting, you call SARS to come and arrest us. A traditional land in our land. In our own land. I think this nonsense is too much. It is too much. And he's in very serious mess. I gave him till 6 p.m. tomorrow for the release of everybody arrested. Everybody they arrested. Everybody. And I need the name of the SARS commander in our band. Get me the idiot's name. Can you hear you? Get me the name of the idiot. The SARS commander in our band. I want his name. So when I'm dealing with him, people will know his name. They can't give the order. Give me the name of the SARS idiot in our band that led those people it does idiots to go and arrest our men and women in our back today. So I can, I can show him what we're made up of. Is it because we keep quiet? Every idiot will come and arrest and, and go free. I need the name of that very SARS, the SARS commander in our bar. I need his name. I need the idiot's name. I want the zoo to record what I'm saying, as they always do. Send it to America. Send it to Capitol Hill. Send it to London. Send it to Berlin. Send it to all those we send it to. Any idiot that comes into our land to kill our people, that idiot will die. For your information. Take a book, Unok, Ndara. Send what you go and send it out to everybody because we keep quiet. You idiots keep encroaching and you keep arresting, you keep shooting, you keep cutting us with your knife and your machete. And we keep keeping we keep quiet. And the more we keep quiet, the more you do it. The more we keep quiet, the more you do it. 6 p.m. tomorrow, if you know this idiot that calls himself a traditional ruler. 6 p.m. AG tomorrow. If our people are not out, then he will be in a very serious mess. We must continue. We are live and we are direct, of course, and the whole world is listening to us. Because they know here we preach the truth. Everything we say comes to pass. Anything I tell you is gospel. If I tell you Buhari is dead and buried, he is dead and buried in Saudi Arabia. 
You can dance around with your stupidity all you like. You can mess yourselves up all you like. The truth is constant. It doesn't change. Eventually, everything will be revealed. Now, are some of you not beginning to wake up? Are you not waking up now? To the realization that there is no way you can have a head of state in power in Asorok and all the nonsense that has been happening will keep happening it is impossible that is something that you must know that is something that you must know these are the things you ought to know and here we are making it abundantly clear that everything we say is the truth the whole truth and nothing but the truth there is no way anybody any human being any soul can contradict any assertion we make on this very platform impossible impossible there is a meeting holding in Trinidad and Tobago I did promise a gin to Chuku Carlo that will give him a call but it hasn't been possible there is a meeting of IPOB in Trinidad and Tobago today the Fulefus thoughts they can take any part of this world from us the idiots thought they can take Trinidad and Tobago. But today our family is there. Today IPOP authentic it is there in Trinidad. And we're having our meeting this very evening. In Trinidad and Tobago. All of you dear friends there, tell your relatives who are in Trinidad and Tobago to look for our brother Jindu Chuku Kalo because we're having a meeting there this very day. The zoo is a country of liars, deceivers, cowards and betrayers and it is now coming to the fore this is a place where Boko Haram will go and blow up people terrorists Fulani, they will go and blow up people in the in churches they go to marketplaces they blow up people they go to IDP camps they kill people they rape they abduct Leah Shwaibu is still missing and so are many other girls as well what do they do the only country in the world where they pamper terrorists they not only pamper them, they integrate them into the army and into the police to continue that reign of terror. But only this time, officially, with zoo army uniform and zoo police uniform. Are you following? And no emir in the north, no governor in the north, in fact, they even pay these terrorists on a monthly basis. None of them will dare go to the police because they know the consequences but in our land because we are very peaceful oh respect elders and all that rubbish you can see the consequences these are the idiots you want us to respect this particular is a number you want us to respect yes his name is Eze Dennis Ihani. these are the idiots the fools you want us to respect because some of you don't reason very well your brains are not correct it is this type of nonsense that brought 400 Fulani Janjaweed settlements in our land. Yet you don't learn. Repentant uh, Boko Haram inducted into the army. That is why it's trending everywhere to get uh, 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 the when people say Buhari, I, I, I feel sorry for them. They mask Wiara with two ears. Or whoever is going to now the, the zoo is run by a mask a buhari hyper reality latex rubber rubber mask anybody wearing it at any time is the president of nigeria if you give it to a little girl to wear that little girl becomes the commander-in-chief in nigeria these are people that claim they went to school all those morons in the zoo that claim they went to school all of them all of them all of them They don't know nothing you are in a country you claim you're fighting insurgency you're fighting terrorism one day you come out and you say to us 602 repentant Boko Haram terrorists formally joined the Nigerian military there are some things that it is I don't I don't know I have preached this thing so much about the stupidity of black people but I think those of you in Nigeria you Nigerians you are taking it a little bit a notch higher up as you as you say there is something about the way Nigerians do something that is very, very troubling. Terrorists, they kill people, they murder, they rape, they pillage. You are granting them amnesty, putting them through school, and not just discharging them, but putting them in the army, giving them guns, bullets, grenades, and everything. So that thing they were doing before illegally, you are now trying to legalize it for them. 
Are you following? This is happening in a country you claim has a living president. Or even living fire. I don't know what they've done with your Sibanjo. Only heaven knows. And every day people get up in the morning and they pretend as if everything is normal. The same way we are pretending in Biafra land when a traditional ruler will go and call Fulani police for his own people. Give land to Fulani in our own hometowns, I'm telling you. Everybody keeps quiet. Every idiot, they keep quiet. As if nothing is, is happening. Some of you may have heard about the explosions in Abakaliki in Ebony yesterday. We are the full and we are storing explosives. Go and ask the Vumahi, he will tell you. Go and ask the army in Ebony, they will tell you. The army in Abakaliki, they will tell you. They went there themselves. This is, the, this is what our traditional rulers are doing, including this idiot. Then you see Hani. He's a dead man walking. 602 Boko Haram freed. They took an oath of allegiance. That oath that some of you don't like. Oh, IPOB, you always say talking about oath. They took oath to serve the zoo, to kill many more people, to advance the foreign agenda Buddhism, to advance the foreignization agenda, to advance Islam and deep the Quran in the Atlantic. That's the, that is the game plan. Forget all the nonsense they have done. They have bought over most of the very big um, uh, consultancy firms abroad. So that when you go and you're telling them what is happening in your village, they say, no, but it's, the, it's farmer head clash. It's farmer head clash. Can you see what they're doing? Tell me any country in the world where there are sensible people with brain in their skull that will allow such travesty of justice. Such... It is, a, it is an insult and a slap on the faces of those who have endured the worst that these animals have to dish out to them. You're telling me you have a president? And you're telling me a terrorist, terrorist. He claimed he came into office to fight terrorists before he died. You're telling me that those ruling in his name are today. You kill somebody. And as a reward, they give you accommodation, they give you money, they give you uniform, everything. They now put you in the army. So now, the quickest way to join the Nigerian army is not to go to the Nigerian Defense Academy. It's not to apply like another person. Just pick up a gun, start killing people in the name of Boko Haram, and they will arrest you. And uh, lo and behold, after six months, you are now a, a commissioned officer in the zoo army. Is that how human beings behave? Do you see why I worry for black people? And I will ask you again, is that how normal human beings behave? Can you show me anywhere else on the face of this planet Earth where terrorists are being recruited en masse into the national army? Is there any other place on this very Earth? There is no other place because you are animals, you are in a zoo. You people are not human beings, you are animals in a zoo created by the British. To house the very wars that Africa has to offer, which is Nigeria. Nigeria. Nigerian military commanders have now fully integrated the repentant, yes, repentant, yeah, 602 Boko Haram fighters into the army after they took an oath of allegiance to the Federal Republic of the Zoo, Nigeria in the Brown State Capital, Meduguri. Under a program known as Operation Safe Corridor, Boko Haram fighters are now being granted amnesty if they lay down their arms. As part of the program, hundreds of them are being recruited, are being recruited into the military where it is believed that their knowledge of the terrain will assist the zoo army in defeating Boko Haram. Have you heard of such people before in your life? Have you heard of such nonsense before in your entire life? Not as part of a comprehensive peace treaty or arrangement with Boko Haram, but you take... Oh, my goodness. Now, do you see you bring in 602 terrorists into the army so that when the likes of that helicopter pilot, that the Yoruba girl, will now fly a combat mission, come back, they will kill her in the barracks. Who are the people killing normal soldiers in the barracks? Are they not Boko Haram? You can't go and kill their, their, their comrades and you come back to the barracks and they will, they will let you go scot-free. Of course not. They will kill you. That is why they are killing normal, sensible, loyal officers in the barracks across the damnable Zoological Republic. They are bringing in terrorists. Have you heard of such rubbish before? But it's the zoo. That is what makes them who they are. The damnable zoological republic. 
they are animals they cannot reason every nigerian once you're a nigerian you cannot reason you are an animal your brain cells are not complete that can never be because you can reason very well in a country where you induct terrorists into the army have you heard of such crap before instead of you to kill them or to jail them for life you commission them to become officers in the army only in the zoo and some idiots will ask me why do you want biafra what utter garbage as a result of this some people are now calling for the arrest of the mask we are but uh, I, I said to them that is a far more difficult approach to adopt the simplest thing you can do to end your misery and your pain and your suffering in the zoo is only to unmask the idiot Aisha's boyfriend we are the idiot with two ears is to take away the mask and all your problems will be solved the problem of Boko Haram will be solved the problem of restructuring will be solved the problem of um, poverty will be solved the problem of primitivity and idiocy will be solved the problem of full and mediocrity both in politics in governance and in economics will come to an end your lives will change for the better why are you bothering asking the mask wearer they call buhari to resign when there is a simple safe quick way to end this misery for everybody we have zoo people who have an opinion they complain all the time all they do is to complain they do nothing they come to social media and they rant their hearts out they do nothing after ranting they do nothing they appear on television they talk the talk and they cannot walk the walk they do nothing people are still dying people are still suffering people are still living in poverty people are still people are still being beheaded every blessed day our villages have been taken over by the ginger weed the traitors are everywhere all we do is people just complain after complaining they do nothing ordinary mali ordinary mali if i'm not mistaken people were protesting on the streets do you know why because they said their president cannot tackle the insecurity they came out to protest but you zoo animals you cannot protest when you call for a revolution you see people who should know better asking for the arrest of those who are calling for a revolution I don't know the type of schools they go to i don't know the type of orientation they may have had either at home or during their formative years i have no idea but there is something wrong believe you me the black man is backwards both intellectually and mentally as a group not as an individual because you may find some individual brilliance here and there as a group as a collective we are we are absolutely hopeless and the whole world knows that that is why we are the lowest of the low but even at that when you come into a cesspit of corruption and ineptitude like sub-saharan africa the way an average animal behaves in the zoo is deplorable by animal i mean a nigerian somebody who comes from a nigger area is a nigerian you have somebody wearing a mask all of you knows that there is nobody with a hole in his neck the whole world over there is no president alive with a hole in his neck they see that the hole is as a result of the mask that jubilee was wearing in cuba they know that jubilee is no more they know that this president cannot come out to address anybody he cannot give any live press interviews he cannot speak for food which is a fulani language native language that that the dead buhari was speaking you know all these things don't pretend you don't know you know them you complain 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 and then you do nothing typical zoo people typical that was how only abacha held the whole people to ransom who put an end to abacha 
He was a Biafran, an Igbo man. Alex Ekwem, he formed the G36. He fought a battle to a standstill. True or false? The Abakobans of this world. True or false? Tinubu was on exile. Is that true or false? Am I lying? You people now have. It's not that it is the original Buhari. I will know it is not. It is a somebody they gave to Aisha. Aisha's boyfriend wearing a mask. You can see the two ears. You can see it very clearly. One underneath the mask and one outside. You can see it. You people are not blind. Even if you're blind, you're not that stupid. You can see it very well. So why bother asking for the arrest of the mask? Because if you say arrest Buhari, you go to the grave in, in Saudi Arabia and arrest him. He's a, he's a skeleton. Just take off the mask. That's all. And it's over. All of you complaining. Now all of you now know that there is nobody there. I've been telling you since 2017. Now you know there's no one there. Take away the mask and all your problems in the zoo are over. All you do is have opinion. You complain. You write. Expose Aisha's boyfriend and it's, it's game over. For the looters. Look at the foreign is looting you dry every day. All you can do is to complain. This is too much. Oh. What you're passing through is too much. Oh. oh dear. Any day you people collectively remove that mask, all the foreign terrorist killings will stop. Miyeti Allah killings and kidnapping of children and the slaughter of Christians in Southern Kaduna will stop. This nonsense about recruiting Boko Haram into the army will stop. Corruption will stop. You will have your restructuring. The revolution that some people have been calling for and ending up in jail as a result of will become a reality because the world can now see the zoo. Stop complaining. Oh, I want, uh, uh, we are suffering. Let's do something. When you know there is no president, that was how God made it. It is the easiest way for you to be free. Expose the fact that there is nobody inside that rock. That is the truth before God and man. They know it. They know this very well. Now that Abakiari is there, don't you know? That have you now come to believe that he was a de facto president? They wrote it. He was a de facto president. What is wrong with all of you in the zoo? What is wrong with it? Is it because it's coming from IPOB from me? Namdekan. Is that why there is this, uh, uh, you know, um, hesitance, so to speak, in terms of coming out and exposing the mask wear he cannot speak jonathan went to see him jonathan spoke before he went in jonathan came out alone and spoke. is that how people do visit cutsy call is it not you go to see somebody then you have a joint press interview is that not how it is done everywhere in the world jonathan went to see him alone jonathan came out alone all we saw was videos no speaking or no it wasn't even audible videos and pictures and all of you 200 million people we are led to believe you see these things every blessed day. Every blessed day you see this junk. Every day, Photoshop after Photoshop. Doctor videos after doctor videos. You have a president in the middle of a pandemic the worldwide cannot address you, cannot call the media and have a media round table. And you want me to respect you as a Nigerian. Of course, it's not going to happen. It won't happen. On top of that nonsense, look at the people they are releasing and putting into the army. I want the war, I want Britain to know because I know Britain they are playing God, they are God, they created Nigeria. How can some a bunch of niggas come and destroy it? They are playing God. Only God can create a nation, but Britain came and created you people, you animals in the zoo, and you accepted it. That is what makes you an animal. Accepting what another man created. They are there. They are the ones remote controlling everything. They are the ones controlling the levers of power in the zoo. The same Boko Haram that they are releasing and putting in the army, they executed five, eight workers. So now what you're telling me is, tomorrow now, the same people that executed eight workers will be in the Nigerian army. What is their qualification? The only qualification you need now to join the Nigerian army is to go and kill people. 
and you're telling me that Nigerians are normal people, these you Nigerians, that you're okay in the brain, that your brains are normal? Is that what you're telling me? Is that what you're telling me? You Nigerians, are you normal? Of course you're not normal and can never ever be. Can never ever be. Suspected members of the extremist Boko Haram sect. This is a newspaper from the zoo. This is premium times. Even premium times do not want to call Boko Haram a terrorist group. Can you believe that? It's a foreign owned newspaper. They set up with your, your tax, with all your money from Biafra land. For free, as they do with their bureau to change. Have you ever wondered why? Anytime you go want to change money, you have to go to a malam that didn't go to school. Where did malam get dollar from? Do you, do you people reason at all? That malam where from Central Bank on uh, phone call. Come on, MF, come on, give them dollars. They you will give them dollars. Every day you're struggling. One Nigerian, one nigger in a zoo. They can't even call them terrorist group. They cannot mention Boko Haram and terrorism in the same sentence, no. They executed their victims, aid workers, working for non-governmental organizations. They released a video. These are the people being recruited into the army. And somebody is telling me that, Niger that you Nigerians, you zoo animals, you're normal. Of course you're not. You cannot be normal. You know, when I push you, I'll show you where to land. People say, oh, why do you call Nigeria a zoo? Why don't you have regard for people of Nigeria? I say to them because they don't reason like human beings. They don't behave or act like normal human beings. Impossible. Something that, if you call, ask your typical Nigerian about Mali, they'll put Mali down. They're nothing. They're, they're backwards. We are the giant of Africa. We are the, should I say, giant fools of Africa. But in Mali, they can demonstrate and call for the resignation of the president. But all of you, all you can do it is on Twitter and Facebook. Hashtag. Can you come out on the streets? Of course not. You can't. And when people summon the courage that some of majority of you don't have and come out on the street, you start to disparage them. You start to castigate them. A typical black baboon. That is the way they are. Now you execute aid workers and all of a sudden you are recruited, recruited into the Nigerian army. That is the best way for you to get going in life. If you want to succeed in life, go and kill and straight into the army. That is the, that is the trade off. Is a good somebody straight off your into the Nigerian army and to probably become a major general. You know, they are quite a general in the zoo. This, uh, that was what, this is what I've been trying to explain to sensible people. I'm sure there are a few sensible people scattered across the zoo. This is what I've been trying to get you to understand. That the longer you remain in this union, this is going to be, can you imagine you go, you execute people, you come back, you now join the army? And meanwhile, there's no president and there's no vice. And I am strongly believing that something terrible has happened to Shibajo. Have you seen him? You have not seen the president and there's no vice. All you hear every day is looting. 4.4 trillion, 8.9 uh, trillion. Every blessed day. Who is looting? Fulani? Who is persecuting? Fulani? Or they are lackeys from the south. People wake up and they say, I am a Nigerian. I feel sorry for them. Let's listen to what this man, some of you has gone viral, our people in, uh, at, uh, some, uh, the good people of Niger ah, International posted it. I'm sure you've seen all of it. I want to play it again. So you will hear that I said, every time I say something, you see a fully full traitors, all these people born under the bridge, you know, dwell about all these idiots. No, their father has no fixed address. Giving birth after the war. Fathered by the Janjaweed during, before, during, and after the war. Hear this man. These are the PDP, I call them the heavyweights, the so called intellectuals. They are, they are lightweight. Now they are waking up. I posted one other boy who is a Buharist on my page. 
Go and hear them. Everybody is now waking up. The man in there is no longer, is not Buhari, not the man we voted for. But when I told you in 2017, they came to kill me, you were hailing Buratai for coming to Isiyama Faruku to assassinate me with a, with a battalion of soldiers. Do you see how a black man reasons? The problem I keep saying all over the world is that I don't believe in racism. I've said it before. I don't believe in racism because black people are getting the treatment all over the world that we deserve. We don't reason like normal human beings. No, we don't. Individually, we may, but as a group, as a collective, no, we don't. The, I said, I told you that in tw I don't lie. Why should I? I told you in 2017, July, if I'm not mistaken, that thing there is not Buhari. They said you can kill him. They can't. You can't kill him. They came to my house. They killed my people. They killed my dog. As a result of the trauma, my father and my mother died as a result of it. Because I told you the truth. Because of that, I had to lose 28 of my men. I lost my cousin at Hako. My dog was killed. And later, later, after about um, two years or thereabout, my mother and my father died as a result of the trauma because they were there. And they came into their bedroom. If you go to my, anybody who's been to my house, go to my parents' bedroom, you will see it. Bullet holes everywhere. My father and my mother were there as they were shooting. Fulani people. They came to kill because I told you the truth. Today, what is happening? Let's hear what is happening. That truth I told that they wanted to kill me because of it. Let us hear what the people are now making of it. Please, do bear with me. Listen. Well, the fight of this government against corruption has been based primarily on rhetorics. The real thing on the floor, just as I'm telling you, we're talking about small NDDC. What about the new hush mummy at Home Minister of Humanitarian Affairs spending 850 billion? 850 billion, she says, feeding children who were supposed to be at home during lockdown. Somebody spent 850 billion on what is called school feeding program. This is where I fought the brain of India. I don't know why Britain chose the perfect place to build a zoo in Africa. The largest zoo in the whole world is in Nigeria. I'm telling you the truth. Some do you know do you know what I find astonishing? People in the zoo, they claim they went to school. Some of them are under anointing. They claim they are pastors, they are reverend, they are ministers and all that rubbish. Some claim they are intellectuals, they are the elite, that they are well read. Others aren't quite schooled enough. They are all there. A full and woman rose up and said, I have spent 850 billion naira on school feeding program. But at the same time, listen, at the same time there is COVID-19, and as you well know, the first places to be that to be shut down are the schools, isn't it? The schools are not in operation. People are no longer going to work. So where did you see the children you spent 850 billion on? Nobody can answer. And she's still holding her portfolio till tomorrow morning. She was the girlfriend of um, Abakir before Abakari died. Are you following? This is a country, you want me to believe there are sensible human, there are human beings walking with two legs, not chimpanzees. And after, do you, do you think that white people don't read all these things? Whites, they read them. They read, and when they read it, they see that we are useless. I'm telling you the truth. You spent 850 billion, not 850 million, no. Not 850,000, no. Not 850 naira, no. 850 billion, billion on school feeding program when there are no children in schools to feed. That's what he's talking about. Let's continue. <laughs> Go and ask anybody you know, Sheun, in your house. How many of the poor people you know in your village got 10 naira? from that 850 billion. We don't know. We're hearing about how our oil was sold in China for 2.5 billion dollars. Oil was sold for 2.5 billion dollars. The simple question anybody will ask is, 
But where is the money? Okay, the money is in the bank accounts in Switzerland, in London, in New York, of and in Dubai, <laughs> of Fulani men and women. They sell the oil and they pocket the money. But they come to fight corruption. And there are 200 million people moping, looking sheepishly, as all this macabre dance of corruption is being played out in front of them. Let's listen. And money shared among members of the government. What you are talking about, uh, those people who now migrated, Okonji Wiala and uh, 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 the man at the African Development Bank, those are products of the PDP's headhunting strategy of finding the best. Who can you talk about in this current government? Nothing. Everybody in this government are competing to outdo each other in terms of corruption. This is what we're saying. A house is not a home if nobody lives inside it. I cannot say will President Buhari exist as Nigerian president. I cannot say President Buhari exists as Nigerian president. Exists. He knows. They all know. But they're deceiving themselves. If he's not seen to be acting to actually steer properly the ship of state. That's why the PDP say, resign instead of people stealing and patronizing our commonwealth in your name. Don't just exist there as a referee inside the field and there is no whistle in your hand. That way, it's just a mess in a football team. Please, President Buhari, leave, walk away, and let us take purpose to sort our country well. We have to... We have to... Are you listening? <laughs> He's asking Aisha's boyfriend to resign to walk away. They know there's nobody there. Are you telling me that the old dictator, the evil Buhari, will be alive and you ask him to leave office? Is he going to listen to you? Is he going to listen to you? Of course not. But these people are deceiving themselves. They are deceiving themselves and they know it. Everybody is fooling everybody, all of them, and they know it. They know there is nobody inside that rock. They know it very clearly and very well. They know it. They know there is nobody there. But instead of them to come out and face the reality and say there is nobody in Asorok, what do they do? <laughs> they say, uh, uh, please resign. Please resign. Resign and go to where? Resign to where I ask you. Resign and go to where? Then I will, I will get to, to, to uh, uh, Malami later. But I want you to, please, um, uh, there is something else I want you to hear. Very, very critical and very, very important. For you to understand the mess that the people are in. They know the truth. They keep dancing around it. They keep skating around it. People keep pretending they don't know the truth, but they know it. Instead of them to speak that truth and for that truth to set them free, they keep hiding and talking rubbish every blessed day. What is that rubbish they are talking? It is this very one. They know that Buhari doesn't exist. Is it right Listen. for your party to say that Listen. this government is covering up corruption and ask for the president's resignation? Is that right? Yes. Uh, it's very correct. We had good luck Jonathan yes. administration. Mm -hmm. Today we have Muhammad Buhari administration. On paper. Uh, borrowing the word of uh, Mr. Ba uh, Mr. Uh, the former grass cutter, he said, what presidency? So what we are saying is, this particular presidency doesn't seem to exist. <laughs> are you listening? He doesn't it's want to say that Buhari doesn't exist. He said presidency doesn't exist. Listen. For guiding the statecraft. We cannot see Buhari. He's missing in action. <laughs> That's why you've seen the hush mommy administrator of humanitarian affairs saying that she spent 850 billion nobody can see him all you see him is he's like him um, coronavirus on paper newspaper and tv you can never see him as a person you can never reference him and say oh there was a disaster so and so place the president was there what does that tell you about the zoo that some of you call a country the zoo nigeria what does that tell you about the zoo? That was how they came and they lied to all of you. <laughs> hey, Igbo man, love money. Igbo man want to dominate you. Have you forgotten that as well? Do you see how they manipulate you? 
Igbo man love money. Igbo man like stealing. Igbo man this, Igbo man that. Look at Ibrahim uh, uh, Lamode. Ibrahim uh, Madu. Abubakar Malami. And all the rest. Tilugu, it is a bullion van. Ganduje. All the rest of them. Are they Igbo people? Did Fulani not convince some of you that listening to me, some of you who are listening to me right now, that Igbo man loves money so much, if he's, uh, if he's, if, if you see an Igbo man lying down and you jiggle a bit of coins in his ears, if he doesn't wake up, you know he's truly dead. A propaganda that they developed, embellished, and planted in your warped minds for years. Today, who is looting the treasury dry? I say, who is looting? Even on that shagari, they did something. Who is looting the treasury dry today? They are looters, but they don't love money. They have their accounts in Dubai, in Switzerland, in London, everywhere. They are mansions, but they don't love money. Is an evil man struggling and opening a business or a factory that loves money? Do you see the what I call reverse reasoning of a black man? Re always in reverse. Everything we do is in reverse. People struggling, trying to make their lives better opening small businesses and taking on people and training them they love money yes somebody working hard every blessed day they go and they open their business they are working very hard they love money but somebody who has no occupation no handiwork just goes into central bank and collects two billion dollars he doesn't love money it's you that is struggling to open your chemist, struggling to open your warehouse, struggling to open your car spare, spare parts shop. You love money. But somebody without, with nothing in life than connection to the caliphate can walk in the central bank and walk away with two billion. And he doesn't love money. Or she doesn't love money. Or as the man called uh, Hush Mommy doesn't love money, yeah? Is a, a hard working, struggling Biafran man or woman that loves money. These are some of the nonsense we have come to correct. And they know it. The same way they lie. Igbo man is dominating. He's going to dominate you. He wants to go into Niger Delta. He wants to take over Niger Delta. And because they know, as well as the British, only an Igbo man can rise up to fight injustice. I'm not trying to put other people down. I'm being honest with you. I'm not trying to put anybody down. But that is a fact. Do you know why? All the independence in the Americas, from Haiti, Web Dubois in the USA were led by Igbo descendants. All of them. Because an Igbo man hates injustice. It, that's a genuine, not all this uh, umoko, all this uh, flavors, all this refraps, selling our land to Fulani. A genuine, pure, clean Igbo man hates injustice. That is why you can never hear that. Ha, have you ever heard that people were attacked in Igbo land before? without provocation let's say the the yoruba community or the Hausa community we attacked we just wake up and attack them has it ever happened before that tells you all you need to know but those who tell you Igbo man is a, is dominant they are the ones dominating you they are the ones bringing in ruga they are the ones taking over your land forcibly they are the ones putting their own terrorists into the army to terrorize and to kill you yet your brains are is filled with stones and pebbles you cannot reason properly now, <laughs> hey, they are calling for, 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 Uche Sekundu says, Nigerians now citizens without government. They know there is no government. They know that very well. They know there is nobody in Asarok. Who doesn't know? There is nobody there. Yeah. There is nobody. If, if Buhari were to be alive, you will see him very angry. When Boko Haram wasn't even, they've not grown to be this horrible. He asked all the all the um, um, serving chiefs to go to to Medugri to set up their base. You see him visibly angry on television talking. This little boy with the young mask is always smiling. He will wave. He will smile. He will walk with a bit of a, a swagger, and that's it. And you're telling me that that is Buhari? <laughs> oh dear. Oh dear me. When a white man treats you very badly, don't blame him or her. A white man or white one, because they see these things that we are seeing. If I'm a white person or an Asian or a Latino or whatever they call them, believe you me, I will not allow black people to come close to me. 
after seeing what I'm saying, heaven knows I can't allow them to come close to me. There is something wrong with them. Human beings don't behave like this. How can you claim that somebody is okay and he has two ears? Two ears, two, 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 not one. A hole in his neck. I told him, don't bring out that thing. Any day you bring him out, we will expose you. Our own analyst is far more superior to anything that Asura can afford. Anyhow, you dress up Aisha Buhari's boyfriend as Buhari and you bring him out, we will identify the faults for you. No matter how you do it. I warned them, don't bring him out. And they brought the idiot out. And we, we, of course, we have disgraced them. A man with two ears. Ntiabu or two ears. All of you are just looking. I asked them, how about the hole in the neck? The Buhari, you know, did he have any hole in his neck? I am asking zoo journalists, Nigerian journalists, they cannot answer. Yes, somebody woke up and said, oh, I'm writing to Mr. President. President Muhammad Buhari. You know he's not there. Now listen, the national chairman of the PDP, which is a Gondus, has expressed sadness that Nigeria has become a nation whose citizens are without a government. The opposition leader said this in a media chat briefing at the party's national secretary in Abuja on Friday. At the press briefing tagged, Nigeria, a free fall as corruption, insecurity engulfs our nation. The PDP chairman said it is now evident uh, that uh, the Buhari government has run out of propaganda with regards to the worsening situation in the country. In other words, there is no president. He is referring to them as Buhari administration. There is no, there's nobody there. They call them presidency. Presidency sends condolence message. Presidency reacts to what the first lady said. Can you believe such rubbish? Only in the zoo. And they claim they're intelligent and they claim they, they have something upstairs. Whereas their brain is empty. Absolutely empty. Of course, I have no truck with them. This useless pdp they're all the same all the same what we're asking for is for freedom for a complete dissolution of the zoo because regardless of who assumes power the corruption will continue after all pdp was there the only justification for the emergence of the late muhammadu buhari was to fight and to tackle corruption and insecurity have they tackled it no has it become worse? Yes. But they are still there. God in heaven has made it possible for the zoo to collapse. But the only thing holding the zoo together is greed and cowardice. Every day they cry. Every day they lament. Every day they complain. Simple to expose the mask we are that they cannot. I remember what our sister wrote on my on my Facebook page as a comment. Her name is um what's her name again? Her name is um Jane in here, she said they all know the truth about the death of Buhari. Houses do, do not want to speak out so they don't lose power. As in the case of Yaradua and Yenada with Fulani. Fulani don't want to come out and say Buhari is no longer there because they don't want what happened under Yaradua to happen again. Yoruba do not want to speak out because of Tinubu's 2023 political ambition. I'm sure that now is in tatters. And I welcome, as I keep saying all the time, this new breed, very vibrant, lively generation of Odudua fighting for Odudua Republic. I commend them immensely. Then there are the classic Hibo Efunefu, the when the Baba in betrayal, that this one they have PhD in treachery and be, betrayal. Their own Sabotua comes with certificate. They don't want to speak out because of their own selfish interest. They know they cannot be president, they know they cannot be anything, but just any any crown that can fall from the master's table, they are they're okay with it. That's why they cannot speak. IPOB remains the only consistent movement, speaking the truth always, because we know that only this very truth can set all of us free. Let us look at the mask worn by Aisha Buhari's lover. It's also on my page in his trip to Mali. Look at it again and tell me there isn't something wrong with black African people. Animals are better than African people. I'll keep saying it loud and clear. If you cannot hear me, hear me now. I know that whites are listening. Everybody's listening. The problem with Africans is that animals are better in terms of reasoning capacity than black people. 
we are an unreasonable, undiscerning, and naive to a fault. I am directing aspects of our broadcast this evening to the downtrodden Hausa and other indigenous populations of the North. The so-called political class or those of you left with a conscience, now is the time to rise up. Abacha was defeated because of the likes of Ekweme and Olisaba Koba. Nadeko stood up and said no to Abacha and Abacha fell. The same parallel situation that led people to rise up then is with us now. And we must do something about it. To remove these murderously incompetent and roundly primitive Fulani presidency. By dividing the zoo. By letting people go their separate ways. The situation is now worse than it was under Abacha. Abacha wasn't this way. It's now worse. Now than it was under Abacha. Under Abacha there was no mass murder. And the enabling of terrorists. No. As this very illegitimate regime is now doing. Only heaven knows what they have done with Oshibajo and his body. All you see Oshibajo's newspaper headline and videos or pictures. Never live. No one can say to me now, I saw Oshibajo in the last month. No one can say that. Only on the basis of newspapers like coronavirus. For how long will you remain slaves? I ask the Hausa people. All of you who are being killed in southern Kaduna, for how long are you going to remain slaves? All of you that your land has been taken over in the Middle Belt, in Benue, in Plateau, for how long are you going to remain slaves? Is it forever? Because it's forever and ever. You know them. Look at what they did to, to house the people. All of you selling land and giving our forest to the Fulani in Biafra land. Do you want your children to remain slaves forever? Some of you don't know history. I will seriously recommend you go back and study history very well. Only heaven knows what is going to become of us. For how long are we going to allow ourselves to be killed and subjugated? For how long, I ask Hausa people. For how long, those of you in Southern Kaduna, for how long will this continue? Those of you in Joss, in Plateau, those in TV, across Middle Belt, for how long are you going to tolerate this level of slaughter and servitude? For how long? Don't you think it's time to rise up? How many are the Fulanese anyway? How many are they asking? Are you telling me that Biafra will rise up, Ududuwa will rise up, Middle Belt will rise up, and then uh, Fulani will say no? No. All it takes is for all of us to rise up. That's all. And it's over. This shara, this game is over. It is in the palm of our hands. We have the power to do something only if we have the courage to pursue our convictions. That is what I'm asking you to do this very evening. And funny enough that Bruno people rejected Boko Haram being reintegrated into the army. Bruno people said no. But because there is no president, there is no vice, there is no direction, there is no compass, nobody knows where they are going. Any idiot in the field can decide whatever they like and come to a decision and that is final. Bruno people said no. Some residents of Bruno states have rejected reintegration of ex-Boko Haram soldiers, sorry, fighters into the community. They said no, but the army went ahead to put them in the army. They will now post them to those villages that said no. Now tell me what's going to happen. That is why accidentally discharge. You see the army killing people. It's not army. It's Boko Haram fighters within the army killing people. I know all those their propagandists, all those their consultants writing rubbish to governments of the world. Of course, and some affiliates as well writing to them, telling them how violent IPOB is. I hope you can now see it. How violent the zoo government is. Bruno, Bruno people said no. Bruno said no. They don't want to be a part of this Boko Haram integration, but they still went ahead and they did it. They did it. And people are now saying, arrest him. Arrest which Boko Haram are you going to arrest? He's in a grave in, in Saudi Arabia. Uh, I think he's a, he's, a, he's a gentleman called Imam of Peace and a few of them. And um, Reno Mokri and a few other people, they said um, they have called for the arrest of uh, President Muhammad Buhari for releasing Boko Haram insurgents under the guise of repentant insurgents who are now killing Christians in the country. Now they know. UK claim they give aid, military aid to the zoo. 
if you give them military aid to fight Boko Haram. And I said to EU, I've said to the UK, I told US lawmakers, these are the same people that created Boko Haram. They don't understand. They, because, you know, a white man doesn't believe that as a statesman serving his or her country, that they will now come out to try to undermine, should I say, the stability of that very society. They don't know who black people are. I think that the problem is that some white people don't understand the way that blacks behave. Sometimes we behave in a way that is detrimental to our own well-being and we don't care as long as we are benefiting from it. The rest of the people can go to hell. I call it the slave trade mentality of a black man. A black man sold black people to whites. Not the other way around. They are asking for Buhari to be arrested because if the people that are running the regime under his name are releasing killers, terrorists, and only a few days ago, the, the same people they claim they are rehabilitating and putting in the army, they killed and beheaded aid workers. How else do you want me to explain it before you understand? How? I keep asking you. How do you want me to, to explain it to you? He was reacting. Even as secondaries, as I mentioned earlier, was saying Nigeria is a free fall as the zoo, Nigeria is in a free fall as corruption, insecurity engulfs the animals in the zoo. The British created laboratory animals in the zoo because all of you are products of Britain. Britain created you. They own you. But what they did was to simply hand over that lease to Fulani to say to Fulani, manage your fellow animals for us. All of you in the zoo, all of you in Nigeria, you are all British wild beasts in a cage called Nigeria. Your president, so called, is releasing terrorists. Now you know that. And I'm asking, listen. We Bia fans are complaining. Odudu what people are complaining. Even the Yorubas amongst them are complaining, saying, oh, we want restructuring. Middle birds are saying, oh, our land has been taken over, we are dying. Southern Kaduna, oh, they are killing us. The, the average man in Kanu, which I shall refer to later on, is also complaining. Why are we all complaining when we can, all we need to say, to, all, all we need to do is to rise up and say, we've had enough of this rubbish. And all these things will be over within two hours. But instead of that, people are considering, oh, it's our turn in 2023. Oh, let us go and fight for political office. That is what is making a mess of the whole thing. And that is why we are suffering. Has it stopped the full army man from using terrorism and the recruitment of terrorism to the armed forces to intimidate all of you in submission? Today, everybody is a coward, apart from IPOB. All of you cannot talk. You can't talk. You cannot say a word. You are all cowards. You leave it to IPOB to do. All you need to do in the zoo, all of us, we be our friends, so do the war, middle belt. I'm not asking you to do anything, any abracadabra, anything too difficult. All we need to do is to stand on the fact that our rock is empty. There is nobody there. We take off that mask that Aisha's boyfriend is wearing. All this house of cards will come tumbling down. There are Guardian newspaper, I don't know what came over them. In the past, they ran something called Buhari's Body Double Suspicion with all the pictures we had published, all the pictures I tweeted about the person they are not being... You can see it with your two eyes, if your eyes are open. How they have managed to hold on to this, I, I don't understand. But as a rock is empty, there is nobody there. That is a fact of life. Go there and sit for that. Now they know. But are we all going to rise up at the same time to say enough is enough? That's the only key. That's the only thing holding. And I'm calling for that, for that this night. We must all rise up as one people to say enough is enough. Then everybody will go back to their villages, their towns, their nations and build it. Not this stupid British experiment. This nonsense in Nigeria. Even your name is a curse. Is the rise rate, is a curse word. Is a, is a slur. Is an insult. Nigeria. But are you going to listen? I have a Jindu on the line. I promised him I will speak to him. A Jindu, I am in the middle of a broadcast. Can you go straight to the point and tell us exactly when this meeting is going to hold? And you will turn your system down. I despise it when people have their system on and when they are calling us. This is not, um, our lines are not open. I promised a Jindu that 
Trinidad Tobago will make the announcement live on air and I'm going to go to him to make the announcement but I need him to turn down his system first before doing that I don't know as soon as I get him then I can you hear me Ejindo can you hear me yes hello good afternoon sir good evening from here please go ahead and make an announcement I'm in the middle of the broadcast go ahead okay sir um, the, this is the RPOB family in Chile and Tobago and uh, by the special grace of Tukuzi Tabiyama our meeting is officially start today and uh, we are, are already gathered and we have our people who are still coming from different places can you please so, make your announcement very briefly because I'm in the middle of a broadcast. Please go ahead. Okay, sir. So we are gathered here. So we want our people to come in from wherever they are. So just call the number um eight six eight seven seven six two eight two three. Or you can come straight down to San Juan Marriage Street fifty five. Marriage Street fifty five. San Juan Esikoro. Wherever you are, our people, I know there are people who are right now calling in for direction. So the direction is given number 55 Marai Street, Esikoro, San Juan, Trinidad, and Tobago. Those who are coming from far, so this is the address. Our people are here and we are assembled and we believe that Chukokikabiyama will direct our meeting this evening. And thank you, our leader, and may God continue to bless you. Thank you very much. He said, he said that was our meeting in Trinidad. We are holding a meeting in Trinidad and Tobago. We are all over the world. The largest mass movement of its kind anywhere on the face of the planet. So my fools went to Trinidad and Tobago with their gossip. They didn't succeed. Of course they cannot because truth is constant. We must continue. There are those who claim that evils were domineering because I'm very happy that this broadcast is going out in Calabar this evening they are listening rapturously in Calabar and across the entire southern part of Biafra land they went and told them because of the incident with Elia Ita that Igbo man is domineering Igbo man is this Igbo man is that all the lies Britain helps them to package it because Britain came Britain realized that the only way people trapped in their cage can escape it is through the guidance of an evil man. I'm, I'm not making mouth. I'm just telling you the truth. The only people with the courage to do it, I'm being honest. I'm not being arrogant. I'm being honest with you. Britain knew. So Britain started on time to divide us. Britain started on time to divide Biafra. They instituted what they call the Willings Commission. They forgot that when they came to Opobo, they met evil men, evil men there. They forgot. Igwenga, they forgot. That's the name. When they went to Boni, they met Igwe men there. The name is Obani. As you have in Obani, Ibeg. Britain knew that if they are going to control the zoo, Nigeria, if they are going to control Nigeria, they need to demonize an Igbo man to the extent whereby even his own brothers will hate him. And they succeeded very cleverly and to help them succeed nam the azikiwe made the fatal error of removing a yoyeta a very bad error a yoyeta went back and said hey they pursued me and the gossipers went and told them we told you the man is dominating for removing a yoyeta as the then head of government business in the east i hope you're listening very attentively britain made sure they did not stop there they didn't stop there. They now gave the full and his advice as to how to deal with Biafran people. You must divide them. That is why when you come to Imo State today, Abraham, I keep saying this every day. When people, why I am against the whole Niger Delta garbage is because they took people, they, they came to Abraham, cut Abraham into two. They say, You, you are now Niger Delta. The same family. The same family. They, they cut it into two. You come into a, 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 a family. Let's say the Ishima family in Ebema. They divide you into two. 
half of you is now Niger Delta, half of you is now Igbo, Igbo State. And you want me to accept that? You must be insane. I won't. That is to tell you, Britain knew what they were doing. It's called balkanization. After the Willings Commission to give the, the southern part of Biafra the impression that they are not connected to the Igbo man at all. But in the north, you have over 250 tribes. The Fulanese are the minority. There was no minority commission in the north, only in the south. And why was that the case? Because Britain wanted, Britain knew. That is why they are afraid of IPOB. They, they knew that a time will come when this movement will emerge. And they were prepared for it with all their propaganda points. They are ready for, waiting for it. An Igbo man is domineering. An Igbo man wants to take over here. Want to, and I'm asking them today. They, and, uh, you see, a foreign agent would write, Igbo man wants to be Afra, uh, Niger Delta included, because of the oil. And now, let us look at who controls the oil in the southern part of Biafra today, including the oil in Anambra, the oil in Imo, the oil in Abia. They don't want, they never talk about it. They will never tell you because their, their aim, their aim is to plant hatred in the minds of people. The same way they tried but failed to plant hatred for IPOB in the minds of Biafrans. They failed because we are live on air. Almost every day. If I'm not here, my deputy will be here. Richard Mavis, Richard Mavis is not here. Uh, George Onibe will be here. If George Mavis, Ike Peters is here. If Ike Peters is not here, then uh, Alosia is, is there. If Alosia is not there, there are those who are talking on Facebook every blessed day. That was why we wanted to contain the hatred they wanted to spread. Oh, if, 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 uh, try to contain what Kanu is doing. He, he's going to stop you from being the president of the order of garbage. We know their game. We know their tricks. They claim you both are domineering. But to see how they own you. They don't come in. They own you. Uruga. Mieti Allah. Settlement by force now. Everywhere in your land. Now who is fooling who? Who is domineering who? I'm asking them. I think people now from the so-called nigger delta. You are begging for oil begging for position but the same people you are begging to allow you in we are the same people that told you an evil man your own flesh and blood you the same dna is your problem and you agreed that is why you are suffering now let us um, look at um i know uh, my country baru is dead the former group managing director of um nmpc now they are begging for a review of the board for nmpc these are people selling oil to china and pocketing uh, almost two 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 point five billion dollars kiari is there mele kiari is the gmd group managing director omar ajia chief finance officer yusuf usman chief operating officer faruk garaba saeed the chief operating i've said this before i'll say it again hadiza kumasi is there these are all former people in the government of um, rub my hand and rub your back they put their children, their relatives in NMPC. I want to ask, where is the person from Niger Delta here? I cannot see it. But if people so called Niger Delta, when they tell you woman is your problem, that's in the past, please, not now anymore. You agree. But look at NMPC. They told you woman wants you for your oil. But let us look at the oil sector and look at those who are dominating it. It is always full and it is here you now, very clear in black and white. Inua Waya, Musa Lawan, Mansour, Sambo, Lawai, Sade, Malam, uh, Malami Shehu, Muhammad, Abba, Abdul Kader, Ahmed, Salihu. You will even think this owned by Saudi Arabians, but the names are answering. But these are the same people that told you an Igbo man is your problem. Do you see how they roll? Do you see how foolish all of you are? Nigger Delta, do you see the level of foolishness you have? The white man came. But during slavery, uh, uh, when you were selling Igbo man, no, uh, Igbo man wasn't dominating you. No, no, of course not. But all of a sudden, the white man came, encountered the Kumeku, fought their way all the way to Lokoja. Every inch they had to fight. 
They knew that the key to freedom lay with the evil man. They proceeded to plant hate in the minds of people. Look at where you are today. And I'm very sorry to say that I, I am an evil man. And I'm leading the movement that is trying to free all of you from your self-imposed bondage due to ignorance, due to your ignorance. Look at them, oil sector. They are the ones in oil sector. They are the ones dominating it. They are the ones making your life a misery. They are the ones making sure that where you go to toilet, where you defecate, is where you drink, you fetch drinking water. It's not domination, yes? Stupidity. Stupidity is a disease, I'm telling you. Only three top positions were allotted to the entire Southern Zoo. No longer federal character. During Jordan, they were complaining, you are doing this, story, but no longer federal character. You see how Fulani, a minority, Fulani is a very tiny, tiny minority. Apart from the court of the MA and the governor, they don't exist. All the houses we need to do is to rise up and say enough is enough, and that's the end of them. A minority group, I said minority, a few of them, not up to 2% of the population. Look at how they're messing all of you up your so-called intellectuals. See how they are banging your heads all over the place because of your stupidity and your self-hate. That's why they control you. You were there and saw, they came and told you, Ibo man is your problem. And you agreed. Yes? So anytime they do something, if you want, yeah, look at an Ibo man, oh, if you talk too much, Ibo man will dominate you. And that is why you are in the mess you are in today. In the mess you are in today, all of you. Nepotism of the highest order. Look at Abakiari family is there. Look at Kumasi, the former IG of police. All of them, they are there. Mustafa, Yakub, all of them, they are there. The same families. Every time after them, their children, they come out and they tell you, oh, one Nigeria, and you agree because you're foolish. Because you're foolish. Because you cannot reason very well. They are saying one Nigeria because they want their children to continue to control NNPC. They are driving baby Bentleys. They have mansions in Dubai, all over Europe. They want to look man, go and see his mansion in Austria, for goodness sake. These people are loaded. Loaded not out of hard work, but by stealing from the national treasury. And if you thought one Nigeria, one Nigeria, one Nigeria, and all of you, you agree, you buy into that garbage and you are in the mess you are in today. And you want somebody to feel sorry for you? You must be dreaming. You must be dreaming, I tell you. You must be dreaming. With this very nonsense in place by the Fulani, somebody call it the Fulani Obdu, Obdu, uh, is it, is it, oh, the, Ob, Ob, Obducracy, whatever nonsense is called. The same way they said, Igbo, Igbo man has no land. You remember that same propaganda? Hey, you have no land, though. Don't try to secede, though. You have no land. But you have settlement in 400 of my villages. The same people that has no land, Fulani are coming and building the attached houses in our forest. But I thought you said we have no land before. Fulani said we have no land. They, they have no land. But then what are you doing? In my land, taking the few that, that we have, since you claim we have no land. Do you see how they, how they turn your brain? They, they spend time and years perfecting their lies and they keep feeding it drip feeding through the media all the time it was you have no land you have yes we have no land but you want ruga in our place now we have no land you use your trailer to bring in your people under the cover of covid 19 and now there are 400 full and settlements in biafra land illegal settlements but some of you will buy the rubbish as we are going to Abuja, going to Medibli, going to Sokoto, they are the ones coming in. As I warned you many years ago that nature abhors vacuum. If our villages are empty, they'll come and they will take it. And are they not taking it now? Did I not tell you then that the more we leave our villages and we migrate out in search of greener pastures, that our enemies will come because nature abhors vacuum. I told you that on a number of occasions. Is it not happening now? 400 detached full and settlements in our land. And as I said, how are you going to remove them? It's going to cost men and money to remove them. After all, after about five years, how can I remove them? It is impossible. You can't remove them. Then it's too late. They're not part of the community. And then Britain will write a report saying, uh, uh, we are advising the Southeast to include everybody there. That's what, they, that, that's what they will say. Which means, if you call traditional village meeting now, you call the Fulani and the Muslims, and they come and join you, and they will bring their own suggestion uh, according to to Quran, according to their ways in Fulani land. 
according to their ways in Senegal. And it's over for us. This is something the Efulefu cannot understand. A typical Efulefu is possessed by a demon. They want money. They cannot see the damage. That is why you can never see or hear an Efulefu write about the illegal Fulani settlements in our land. Never. He is contracted or she's going to write about Namdekano, IPOB. Do you know why? Because they want to keep us busy. They want to keep us occupied, the gossiping, as their Fulani masters are busy building their villages. You don't know that. That is their job. That is why we said you must ignore them. That is, uh, the more they write garbage and you respond, the more you don't know that the Fulani is uh, building a settlement in your village. You don't know that? That is their game. That is their game. If you don't know, we are telling you today. We are telling you today. It is as if, they, I don't know, Fulani, they do this very well. They position their agents everywhere. Have you noticed how no politician, none whatsoever, or any traitor or saboteur, will ever talk about foreign taking our land? All those pictures that I posted about Okwa, what is happening in Ebony right now as we speak, they will never write about it. There is one thing about a sabo and a zoo politician, a fulefu, a fulefu, and a traitor, that is the way they are. Their job is to take your mind away from what matters. By gossiping, by yapping, you follow them and the Fulani is building in your village. Later on, they can collect their money from Miyetiala. You don't know that? It's Miyetiala that is funding them. But you wouldn't know. You wouldn't know. But tonight, I am telling you, I am telling you, they spend their time feeding you with trash and gossip in order to divert your attention away from the damage their Fulani masters are doing to us. Do you see their game plan? But some of you think you are engaging them in a conversation when in actual fact, their aim is to divert you as their Fulani masters advance into our territory. Don't you know that? Don't you know that? Everywhere we're being fought, but we are winning. Everywhere they go to, we are winning. A Nigerian army, we are terrorists are being released back into the society after repenting. Oppression, safe, call it all safe about it. A terrorist. Unbelievable. This is the British created Nigeria. Nigeria. But my happiness is that due to what we have been doing, people are now speaking out. I'm going to play this. I don't speak Hausa. But I know that Radio Biafra is being listened to in Kanu right now. People are listening. Everywhere people are listening. And I want to play this very clip. So that and I will read out for you. Maybe I will play about a minute. And I will read out for you exactly what this man is saying. So you will understand that the zoo is in a mess and that people are now listening to us. Listen. Coronavirus, Takashim. Lassa Tiba, Takashim. Wanani, Yakashim. Send them by one and dip me is about Muna Pama, the Talos. Muna Pama, the Rahil Duansha. Muna Pama, the current Sambutoti, the Maguna. Muna Pama, the Duas must annoy you what and the Lato at Duala Tosa. Bazasi Kiruba Bazasi Kiruba. Abarma the Talosum Mumana. Awal muda har kucing kasuar mu, masa muda ro kubo muti abang ti, musha abang sha. Awal muda kalian cerita yang luar sha, demi ke fama deh agak sar mu. He is speaking Hausa language, and I'll tell you what he's saying exactly. This man is saying, what is happening in Nigeria? He's asking, what is happening? There are so many troubles in this country, and we are losing patience. This is an Hausa man. Day and night, there is no rest for the people. We are suffering too much. They keep lying to us about everything. As COVID-19 came, we are worse hit. Lassa fever came, same thing. We in the north are always at the receiving end. Every sickness that comes, we are the worst hit. When you try to, con to, to contest the many lies, they will quickly use our religious leaders to calm us down. You see what they're doing? Janjaweed. And who are the religious leaders in the north? All Fulani. Fulani, because an Awasa man cannot lead a prayer when there is a Fulani person there. Are you aware of that in a mosque? That is, people don't know that houses are, houses are living like slaves. Hausa people are more or less slaves. Forget that you may see them in the army or in the customs or whatever, doing the bidding of the Fulani, because some of them don't know they are slaves. Ask any Hausa person you know, if we go to a mosque now to go and pray the Juma prayers on a Friday, and as a Fulani man there, will you lead the prayers? The same way that a Yoruba man cannot lead prayers in a mosque when there is a Hausa man there or a Fulani man there. It's, as, it's given. Are you aware of that? 
He is saying they will use our religious leaders to calm us down. Now we are battling with poverty. No good drinking. As they, they are the ones looting billions. So the people that claim that they are their leaders are the ones looting billions. This Hausa man is telling you he's very upset. He is very, very upset. We have no drinking water. We have no uh, uh, water to bathe. No good health facility. No single drug in hospital. Um, hospitals are shut down. Nothing at all. We are tired and we must change our ways. How's a man is speaking? Maybe a student of Radio Biafra. Who knows? People are now waking up. Remember when they said us, don't say anything. Don't speak. Don't talk on radio. Don't. You see? You see that people are now beginning to be enlightened. That was our mission. Not to cheat anybody. Not to make life hell for anybody. Forget all the propaganda. They are telling you, uh, they want Biafra, they hate everybody else. No. We love you. Everybody, uh, we want everybody to be free. And as I have said, if oil is your problem, we'll give you oil and gas. We'll even build a seaport in Lokoja. We move the goods along River Niger, come to Lokoja and dump it, and people from the north can take for free. It is a lie when they are telling you that Biafra is bad for you, they are lying to you. When they say that IPOB is bad for you, they are deceiving you. They are deceiving you. You can hear the house man. Listen, he said, even our poor and miserable lives that we are managing and trying to live with is no more certain for us. Even the small, the common small generator we are using to power electricity, since they have refused to supply us power, they have banned it. We can no longer use it again. Petroleum products are so expensive. No income, no job, no good thing from this government. This is from an Awasa man speaking. What else do you need to know? That the time is ripe for everybody to rise up and demand their freedom from the Fulani Caliphate. Because it is not the Fulani who are ruling you. It's the British, the neo-colonialists. They are the ones using Fulani to subjugate everybody. They don't see you as human beings. That's why they named you nigger. I want you to... I mean... Uh, I wish you people can reason. Oh, my prayer every day from now onwards is that please, Lord God in heaven, Give an average zoo animal the capacity to reason properly like a human being, even though they do not behave like one. Now listen to what he said. He wanted to say, I stand on my feet inside this mosque to swear in the name. He was in a mosque. Uh, uh, please uh, publish that very video and the, and the commentary as well, the, the, the interpretation. I stand on my feet inside this mosque to swear in the name of Allah to tell you the truth. There are no governors. No president in this country. And our Saman says there is no president in the country. So do you see why speaking the truth always is very good? When we, st I'm sure he was one of those that said, go and kill him, Nam the Kano in 2017, when I said Bukhari was dead. But today, this man is crying. He is swearing by Allah. He was broadcasting from inside the mosque. And he said, there are no governors, no president in this country. We must stop deceiving ourselves. Let's face the reality. Forget the tribe and speak the truth. Do you see that we have succeeded? In making people conscious. That is the job we set out to do. And Chiko Kikadema has done it. People are now beginning to reason and talk properly. So we are very close to home. Very, very close, I tell you. Once they realize, once an hour man realizes that his potential to attain economic greatness and social cohesion will not be threatened by an independent Biafra, believe you me, an Hausa man will seek his own. I want a nation called Hausa because the Hausa people, they are ancient people as well, very old, with a civilization to be proud of. So also is Kanuri. I mean, can you believe coming into Africa and traveling to ancient lands the way it used to be before the white man came. You want to go to Hausa land? You want to go to 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 um to to Kanembrano land? You want to go to Dudua? You want to go to Biafra? You want to I mean Middle Belt you have to look for a name that suits them. You want to go to TV land? These are ancient names that existed before the white man came. Can you imagine going to those places with such pride and such honor? That is what we are talking about. That is the thing that we are looking for. For people to be free. 
I have said it and I will say it on air because the whole world is listening. I will place the oil and gas of Biafra land at the disposal of every component ethnic group in the damnable zoological republic. We will give you oil and gas for free. I am, hold me to it. I am saying it live on air. We will put it into international treaty that will be overseen by many, by major powers around the world. We, will, we are even going to supply gas to West Africa for free because we want the economies to also grow because we need people to buy our goods and services. Our economy is not going to be based on oil and gas. Our economy is going to be based on the things we are going to manufacture and produce with our brain which is the greatest natural resource anybody can have anywhere in the world. That is pure common sense. That is the type of Biafra we're looking for. Not Biafra to sell oil and one idiot to be sitting there somewhere eating money, no. We are going to seek for what is called inward investment. We are going to convince the companies of the world rather than manufacturing and shipping, which is very expensive. We do what China did. Come and manufacture very cheaply in Biafra land and distribute to the Southern Hemisphere. Very simple and neat. That is our economic plan. Eh? And we, you know, so the, uh, uh, road map, sea map, underground map, we are not going to tell you because if we tell you, you will copy it and you bastardize it. But this time I tell you, let nobody deceive you that Biafra will mean cutting off, there will be no oil, there will be no gas, never. The people right now, every component ethnic group in the zoo, once you are an independent nation, will pipe oil and gas to you for free because we don't need it. I'm being honest with you. We don't. The, see, oil and gas is the mainstay of the economy of very lazy people. Only lazy people can rely on oil and gas for survival. And we are blessed. We're not going to do that. We are is our president, the man was asking. There is no president. And now they know it. People's eyes are now beginning to open. I now pray that the same people that told us that Buhari then, before he died, was a repentant Democrat. Look at what his administration is doing to all of you. Those of you that voted for, 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 for the dictator, you have seen the mess you put everybody in. Have you seen it? Because you lack foresight and you lack vision. You lack foresight and you lack vision. Even this man, I love reading his, um, his epistle sometimes. He writes from Atlanta all the time. His name is Farouk Berogi. He wrote, <laughs> he said to be sure, I'm going to read some of the things that he wrote. Very, very interesting. He said to be sure, there was never a time in Nigeria's history when corruption was an issue. Corruption has been there from day one because that was how Britain built it. Britain built the zoo, the zoo, Nigeria, and planted it on corruption by falsifying the census figures. So corruption is part and parcel of the zoo. Corruption is part and parcel of the damnable zoological republic. Part and parcel of it. Can never, that's what uh, 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 Farouk Berogi is writing here about. It's, it's always been there. He said, I don't recall a time when corruption has not been as overpoweringly pernicious in its depth, breadth, rottenness, impunity, and frequency as it has been in the last five years. In other words, the last five years is the worst period in the history of the zoo in Nigeria since 1960 that the zoo that the britain gave power to the fulani to manage the zoo for them nigeria the last five years is the very worst in the history of the zoo both in terms of corruption impunity rottenness insecurity everything name it but will you listen of course you're not going to listen because of who you are you will not listen because of who you are as corrupt as Jonathan was, according to this man who was who is writing, it was once railroaded by the force of public opinion to accept the designation of Stella Odua because she bought BMW cars. Stella Odua bought BMW cars and was forced to resign as Minister of Aviation. Having found a new understanding with our Oduduwa brothers, it doesn't mean we cannot speak the truth here. I don't know the reason, I cannot see the reason why newspapers in the West, Yoruba newspapers, cannot call for the designation of this hush mummy in humanitarian affairs, whatever her name is. 
that he used 850 billion to feed school children. Have they called for her resignation? The same way they were calling for Stella Odua because they know that Stella Odua comes from an ethnic group where she will receive no defense. That they don't control anything. They won't give you anything in return. The reason why the Yoruba media has not gone for that hush mummy, that girl in humanitarian affairs, whatever her name is, is because they can get something from the foreign, and they're afraid of the foreigners as well. You see how it works in the zoo. That is how it works in the zoo. And that is why we must remain fearlessly glued to the truth all the time. I said fearlessly glued to the truth all the time. He said, do you know the funniest thing? He said, he didn't write this thing this, this year. He wrote this very column October 30th, 2017. But everything he wrote here is very, very pertinent today. They are very relevant today, this very day. Since 2017, nothing has changed. In fact, things have become markedly worse. That is the zoo you are in. Anytime they tell you, don't tamper with one Nigeria, we are one Nigeria, is because they want to keep st stealing. They want to keep looting. They want to keep deceiving you. They want to keep beheading you. They want to keep taking your land. They know that as soon as Nigeria ends, Nigeria, as long as it comes to an end, there will be no more Ruga settlement in the south. No more Fulani settlement. Illegal ones now. They may come and be in our towns. That's no problem. No more illegal Fulani settlements in our villages. They can no longer take our oil and gas and do as they like. Their children cannot live five-star lifestyle anymore in the capitals of the world. Driving the most expensive cars you can ever imagine. You will not have exclusively Fulani on the board of NMPC. Those are the things they are going to lose. So when somebody says to you, one Nigeria, it means they are serving a Fulani overlord. That's the meaning of it. The time now is approximately eight minutes. Eight, it is, yeah, eight minutes to nine p.m. in the evening in the land of Biafra. Eight minutes to nine p.m. in the land of Biafra. The whole world is listening. We are live and we are direct. Somebody said that I'm tired of the zoo. Is still is evil man still the problem? I'm asking. Is evil man still the problem of the zoo? I am asking. They say Biafrans are rebels, evil man is the problem. But now you have all agreed that what Ojupu saw in 66 and 67 is playing out today, isn't it? How, can you not see it? Has it now occurred to all of you that the reason why there was a concerted effort to demonize the evil man is because the British and their Fulani house niggers? They know that it's only an evil man that can save the rest of you in the zoo called Nigeria. I'm saying it without any apology. Only an evil man can lead, can lead a revolution that will free everybody. The same way an evil man did in, in Haiti. And across the Latin, uh, the Latin world. Even in the USA itself. Is it not very clear to all of you? Is it not very clear to all of you? Those doubting Thomas is, is it now very clear. The reason why they chose an evil man to demonize an evil man is to make your freedom impossible. To make as they are killing you, as they are cheating you, as they are looting your treasury, they keep saying to you, oh, an evil man is the problem. Evil man is the problem. Have you seen it now? Even the houses are waking up. They are waking up. They are waking up. And my very happiness is that one somebody wrote something very, very interesting, which I must read out to some of you. I think it's from Ronta Douglas. No, no, this one from Ronta Douglas. Ronta Douglas is one I will try and read out later on. It is what somebody said regarding this so-called uh, uh, fake plot, so to speak. Fake, fake plot. Uh, they said uh, an able man is coming to take our oil in the south south somebody responded to them a south a southern Biafran, so to speak responded to them and he was responding to a full man a full man wrote biafra is evil plot to colonize south south and they know that there's nothing called south south in this world they know that south south doesn't exist in any map in any cardinal point but that's them they gave them South, South, and they're answering. In fact, uh, they have abandoned that one these days. No, North should not cry for us. Our brother is writing. His name is Donald Ego. He 
a reply to somebody called Sergei Ringim. And he said to him, Biafra is a, is a plot by Igbo to colonize South South and Haji Sergei Ringim. Now, Dora Depo responded, North cannot speak for South South. He who comes to equity must come with clean hands. He went on to say, Sir, I want to thank you for your concern about the welfare of the people of the South South by exposing the plans of the Igbos to recolonize the region as if there was a time Igbos colonized anybody before. Do you see how education is in the zoo? Do you see how warped the minds of zoo people are? But we'll continue. But I'm worried about the sincerity of these your concerns because of these worries, let us dissect and carefully assess your statements of fear and concern in four segments. So as not to repeat the mistakes of 64, 66, 67 to 70 till date. In your carefully written letter or chat with journalists, as reported in National Dailies yesterday, you clearly stated that Igbos want to one. That's IPUB. We want to seize the economic the economic prospects of the minority ethnic nationality of the oil rich region. So now he believes there are ethnic nationalities. No longer South South. You see how clever they are. Now he, re he responded to ring him. Epo said to ring him. May I remind you that the economic prospect of the South South is currently being seized and controlled by your people of the Northern Protectorate of Nigeria. Simple. This man, Epo knows, Epo knows that every, I told you, every time they want to blame the woman for everything. So as like like professional gossipers we have in Biafra land, they want to keep your mind focused on something else. This man said to him, but your people are the ones who are now colonizing my region. Are you aware that even the oil wells in Abia State, Himo State and Anambra, and recently Enugu is being owned by your people in Northern Protectorate? Do you know that the oil well in Okwa, Okwa Abia State, where I come from, I, I come from Oma, of course, not Abia State, do you know that the oil wells in Imo State, in Anambra, are being owned by Fulani people? Are you aware of that? They tell you about one Nigeria, you are aware? That is what our brother Ebo is pointing out to this Janjaweed who was writing and addressing the media and telling them rubbish. And that is what the zoo media will write. Oh, Nam the Kano, IPOB, you want to colonize the South South, you want to capture the region, you want to capture the oil field. They have forgotten that Abia State has oil field, oh. They have forgotten, no, oh, that Imo State has oil field. They have forgotten. That Anambra is oil, Enuku is oil, Ebo is oil. They will never tell you that. Do you see this is that thing that the British told them? Britain said to them, keep saying it all the time. If you keep repeating it, people will believe it. Keep saying it. Even if they are fighting you, keep saying it. Keep telling them, Igbo man is coming to colonize you. Keep saying it every day. The idiots will, will absorb it. And some fools amongst them did. He's now telling him in the north. <laughs> he said to him, Al Haji Sagar, may I remind you that the Igbos are not the, the, the colonialists, as you have insinuated here, but you and your people in the north are. Ebo is writing to him, and Mchebe is from Cross River State, writing to this Janjaweed, telling him, You people are the colonizers, not Igbo people. Do you understand it? They have so far not shown the threat to colonize as compared to your people. Ebo is educating a northerner, telling him, you people, Janjawi, the fallen, you are the colonialists. You are doing the bidding of the British. That is why no British paper can write about the killings going on. No British paper can discuss the slaughter of Christians. No British paper can carry the slaughter in Southern Kaduna. If what is happening in the zoo were to happen anywhere else in the world, the British Foreign Minister will stand in the House of Commons to deliver a statement. But because it's the zoo, they can't say anything. They don't want to draw the world's attention to what is happening in the zoo. It is a carefully managed PR exercise by the British Foreign Office. Who are the ones colonizing the South-South? It is you from the North who are doing it. Biafra is landlocked and wasn't blessed with solid minerals apart from coal. Can you believe, can you believe what a human being is writing? 
the largest gas field in the whole of Africa is in Ohaji. Do you see? Do you see how people who live with lies? The thing about the zoo Nigeria is that Nigeria is a land built by liars for liars and inhabited by liars. So the oil shell shell is in Uguta. So what is shell doing in Uguta? What is shell doing in Oba? What is Oriental you doing in 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 in, in Aguleri? I don't understand how people, how somebody who claims is learned, Sagay Ringim, whatever the idiot's name is, can come out and decide to lie. Do you know it is the oil in Abia, in Imo, that is being piped underground and being lifted from the coastline of Biafra land? Are you aware? Can a ship come to Ukwana? The answer is no. So what is Shell doing? Okay, all by all, all that oil that Shell is is drilling in in uh, in Ebema, in Ukuta, in our mama, where is it going to? Is going to the coast because no ship can come to Ohaji because there's no waterway. They have to pipe it underground. Do you see? And he claims he's learned. He claims he is an educated man. But thank you for the lectures that you have given to him. Our dear brother, Ebo, he's from Cross River State. They understand. Some of them are not beginning to realize all the lies that we are told. All the lies that we are told is to hold you down in perpetual bondage. Igbo land is not landlocked. It is not go to as many. I don't know why people are foolish. They know the truth. They keep writing rubbish. People who are not educated enough to understand their place in the zoo are the ones commenting. Igbo land is not landlocked. Opopo is Zibo land. Bonnie is Zibo land. Asumiri is Zibo land. Don't you know that? You don't know where Asumiri is? Is your people not Zibo land? Is Iguacha not Zibo land? What was the name of Port Harcourt before the white man came? Is Iguacha? What is the name of Opopo before the white man? Is he called Iguenga? The name of Opopo is Iguenga. People should go and do their research properly. What was the name? Is Port Harcourt a, a black man's name? Is Port Harcourt a name of a black man or black woman? What was the name before the white man came? Igwacha is the name. For those who do not know, for those who claim they have forgotten, we are here to remind you every blessed day. We are now going to look at the, the time now is 2 minutes past 9 p.m. in the land of Biafra. We are going to look at what Oronto Douglas wrote about Niger Delta. He, he, he said, a generation that lived on misinformation and lies. Everything you see in the nigger delta today, all the idiots running their stupid mouth over Biafra, IPOB. The idiots, your own brother wrote something for you, left it for you before he passed on. Now, this is about Niger Delta. Do you know what Douglas wrote? Oronto Douglas wrote and said in 1955, when we were, sorry, in 1995 rather, when we were preparing for the National Constitutional Conference under General Sanya Abaja, our elders in Niger Delta told us to look out for support of the North and perhaps the Southwest delegates when proceedings began. I told you before, they groomed them, these so called Nigger Delta people, South, 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 and whatever rubbish that the, some of the idiots used to call themselves. I say it this way because the, that land is Biafra. I'm not insulting any Biafra. No, not at all. Because there are many Biafrans there, but I will tell you the truth. If you call yourself Nika Delta or South South, I will have no regard for you. Let heaven fall down. Your stupidity, I will tell you to your face. Every blessed day of your idiotic life, I will tell you because Nika Delta means nothing in the language or lexicon of our people. South South means nothing to us. It's not a name. It's not our name. I cannot bear it. Mad people everywhere. Douglas wrote on how their own elders, you see Edwin Clark. You see Edwin Clark. They went to come five in 1995. Edwin Clark, you know what they're saying? Oh, let's leave the Igbos. Let's go to the north. They will support us. Let's go to the north. They will support us. These are your own flesh and blood. Flesh and blood. The same DNA. The same ancestry. The same descendants. You share everything in common. But because Britain, Clare Valley, Clare Valley identified them and knew they are going to be used to make slavery possible. Let me tell you one simple fact. Before the coming of IPOB, the 
the fact that everybody is suffering in the zoo called Nigeria is as a result of the Niger Delta rubbish and South South garbage. I'm telling the truth. Britain used them. You everywhere Britain went is look at an evil man, look at an evil man because Britain knew. Britain understands that only an evil man can save all of you. Britain, go and ask them, they will tell you the truth. What we are doing, can anybody else do it? I'm asking all of you who are listening, what we are doing with IPOB, can any other group of people do it? I'm not boasting, I'm just telling you the fact. You cannot do it. Not now, not tomorrow, not ever. We are here to save all of you, even from your own ignorance. This is what our brother is writing. Do you know Edwin Clark? You're seeing that man, Edwin Clark, Papa Edwin Clark, told their so called uh, Nigger Delta delegates, let us look to the north for help. Let us not go to the Igbos. Now, listen. The understanding was that our southeastern brothers are always against us and will never support us. Who told them that? I don't know. Do you see how people go about carrying rubbish in their brain? If you come now and ask them, you say, oh, IPOB hates everybody. But they know we don't. We are the ones fighting for those Christians who are being killed. But we are fighting for people in southern Kaduna. I am fighting for an Awasa man to be free. I am fighting for a Kanuri man to be free. I am fighting for Duduwa to be free. But they lie. They keep lying and lying and lying. And some of these idiots, they absorb it. Listen to what Toronto Douglas said. He said, When they got to the conference, they asked for 25% derivation. But before they went, they said they know to support them all. Oduduwa will support them all. But as they got to the conference, they said we are the oil producing states. We want 25% derivation, which means you give us 25% of all the revenue that accrues from the oil sales you're making from our land. No northerner supported them. No southwestern delegate supported them. To our surprise, according to Ronta Douglas, the southeast gave us block support 100%. The same before they left, they said, no, don't trust the Igbo. So the only people that gave them 100% support in Abuja were the Igbo people, their own brothers and sisters. Do you, are you saying it? Let me continue. To our surprise, the southeast gave us block 100% support and we decided to stage a workout. Because the north said no, the west said no, and the Igbos came with us and said yes. When we decided and said we're going to walk out, do you know who walked out with us? Our Igbo brothers walked out with us. Did you read this in the newspaper somewhere? No, because they know that the Yoruba media understand if we write this, it will unite Biafra together. The Igbo man will come closer together with all our people. In the so-called nigger delta that will be one family again they didn't write about this thing nobody knew but Toronto douglas very briefly wrote about it are you following we are here to dismantle all the lies of the zoo that's our job that is my job do you know that it was the same evil people that some people from nigger delta said no don't trust them we trust our we trust the flani we trust the north we trust the west when they got there the north disappointed them west disappointed them it was those their rejected brothers from Igbo that gave them 100 percent support even when they got upset and said they're walking out their Igbo brothers followed them and walked out did you read about it anywhere no neither is here and i thank chi the kali I I saw it from his I uh, see the character that I posted it. I got it from his page. I saw this, but it's everywhere now. I understand maybe they are friends. I saw it from there. So I when I take something from somewhere, I reference the person. That's where we got it from. He was the one that posted it. Where I saw it. I don't know if, if it was if it's been originally published somewhere else before, I don't know. Now listen, General Sanya Abacha then intervened and gave us 13% derivation we are enjoying today. Because of the help of the Igbo people, we in conjunction with Nigger Delta, as they call themselves, but I call it the entire Biafran family, of course. It is confusing that what our elders told us was different from reality. Do you know that what Edwin Clark was telling his own people about his own flesh and blood, the Igbo people, 
were around. They now knew when they got to Abuja, they saw the way the Igbo delegates behaved. They said, oh my God, oh, I never knew that things are like this. They now knew that their elders were lying to them. Every garbage your grandfather must have told you about an Igbo man, about the so-called Southeast, is a lie. It was proven in 1995 in Abuja. Proven beyond every reasonable doubt. It is a shame, isn't it? But it is not late to make the wrongs right. It is also great that the 1995, um, um, uh, uh, so 1995 confab and um, Jonathan's government has shown that uh, there is no way an Igbo man can hate his own flesh and blood. Because Igbos and um, his own people, they are together in Okreka, together in Opobo, in Boni. So how can you hate your own flesh and blood? It's not possible. It is not just possible. So no matter how hard they try, no matter how hard they try, we cannot hate. Is it is you cannot hate yourself. It's impossible. Ison and Igbo people are one. If you doubt me, go to Boni, go to Opobo. We are one people, one people. For your information, who voted for Jonathan and Block? Jonathan is from the so-called Nigger Delta South South rubbish. Who voted 100% for Jonathan? The same people that you are talking rubbish against. Because you don't have brain, you don't have sense. It's your guilty conscience. When we started the radio, I said it about equal land. When said, oh, we are not, we are from Bini, we are from Akaraka, talking, talking garbage. Ali Ikwere, Ikwere Eche, that is Igbo land. And I, I came on this same microphone, this same radio, and I said to them, your problem is abandoned property. You don't want people to talk about abandoned property. You are ashamed. You are a product of, of stolen goods. They use stolen goods to train you in school. So, because you have to defend the criminality of your fathers. That's why you said you're from Bini. But all of that is by the way. Abandoned property is because we are going to Iwacha is going to be our capital. Every house be knocked down, we'll build something so spectacular that when people see it, they will say indeed their, their friends are blessed. Not all that rubbish for oh, face me, I face you nonsense. No. We are going to build a modern capital that when a white man comes to Iwacha, they will say, I never in my life would have believed that a black people are capable of this. So, so take your inferiority complex elsewhere. Equal land is Igbo. And Yoma is Igbo. If you say you're from Bini, pack your things and go to Bini and live in Bini. If you, yes, now if you say you're from Bini, go to Bini and live there. Your name is Ike your name is Amech, your name is Wike. You, you, you want to go and join people who are Iguavo? Does your, your, is your brain correct at all? Does it mean you cannot reason? But anyway, we have passed that nonsense, nonsensical stage. Igbo is, of course, IPOB and to the core. I welcome it. We say what we say because of our affection for every each and every. Biafra is one family. I can prove it. I can prove how we are all related. I can prove it anytime, anywhere, any place. Others cannot say the same for themselves. We must preach this very gospel because heaven is burning. 30 minutes past 9 p.m. in the land of Biafra. We must preach it. For very many years, they have spent time deceiving all of you. They told the sick people, a sick people in Calabar, Igbo man is your problem. Today, we have risen to liberate everybody, not just Igbo people, but the entire Biafran family. We have even gone as far as trying to liberate Hausa, the Nupe, the TV, the Jukun, all the free body, all the way to Duduwa. Everybody has to be free. Everybody. These are the same people that we are mocking us. That we don't have enough land. Look at Opa, they have taken. Everywhere they have taken our land. We are chasing them away from, from a boy state. Have you not seen it? We have discovered where they loaded their weapons in their bakaliki. If you don't know, some of you don't know what we are doing. Because if we say it now, they'll take it, uh, they'll cut it out and say, Oh, look at Nam the Khan, he said it's peaceful. Oh, can you see how violent they are? That is all they are waiting for. They are actually gossipers. That's all they want in life. So they can write the State Department. They can write Pompeo. That's all they know what to do. They cannot write Pompeo complaining about Fulani raping and killing their sisters. No, 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 they won't. 
is writing down the canon. His his members we are somewhere intimidating people. They are terrorist group. Somebody is writing to State Department in America, asking them not to give me visa, and the idiots will come out and say they're fighting for for Biafra. That's who they are, and we shall keep exposing them. Sometimes I wonder, given what's happening in Okwa West, sometimes I wonder. I wonder if Fulani is actually the problem or the zoo animals, those that call themselves Nigerians. Who is the problem? Let me tell you why I'm saying this. Because you, ex you would expect journalists to be very sensible and very reasonable. But after the criminality of Ismaila Issa Funtua, Nigerian journalists who every day would write that things are bad, or things are bad, or, uh, corruption is everywhere, they went and named a building. They named the building, the, the, the NUJ building, after Funtua, who is a confirmed looter. He took over it is a lot, they call Nine Mobile, by not paying anything. A criminal extraordinaire. The same journalist who every day they were writing to us, uh, your corruption is everywhere. Let's say the same journalist in the zoo, they are immortalizing a man who epitomized the corruption, looting, and criminality, or brigandry, so to speak. <laughs> you see them? The, uh, the country is bad. Let's move it forward. Let's do something. But they are the ones promoting criminality by naming their building. After it's happened to her. the same way that they named the stadium in Kano after after Abacha. That's how the reason. That is how the reason. Zoological Republic. What I'm saying tonight is that Fulani is in the minority. If they had good intentions and ability to govern properly, there won't be a problem. But they epitomize mediocrity and the irredeemable primitivism of a black African. That's who they are. Primitive people. All they need to loot. They loot, they loot. Uh, after m how many years of uh, funding research? All the places of Kilishi. Kilishi research after many years. I keep asking you, those of you campaigning for Fulani president all the time, I keep asking some of you. You know, if you say that something is sweet or nice, you tell us what it tastes like. I asked you, every time he's a full man that will come out, vote me as the president, and I keep asking you, you want to fix the economy? Okay, yes. Name one renowned full economist. That's none. You want to industrialize the zoo, Nigeria, yes? Name one full scientist, you know. None. Name one full poet, you know. None. If they cannot produce all these people, how do you trust them to produce somebody who can be a president? Simple, common question that I expect those with common sense to be able to answer. But they cannot answer it. They cannot answer it. Let me tell you why I tell you every day that your average Nigerian is a mental case. I want to let you understand that being a Nigerian, if I see you, I hate you anyway. Once you say I'm a Nigerian, as, as those who claim they're my friends, once you start writing rubbish and we Nigerians, I'm a Nigerian, I cut off from you. I don't, I don't, I know you're not reasonable. Once you say I am a Nigerian, or a proud Nigerian, I know from that day onwards you're not a human being. You cannot reason very well. Number one, no black man created Nigeria. It's the British. And the word or the name Nigeria is an insult. It's a slow, it's, it's nigger. Go and check it. So, where where is the value of your education? You are educated so that when you see something right, you say, oh, it's right. If you see something wrong, you say it's wrong. You cannot be educated and accept that Nigeria, the way it is, is a nation or a country. Of course not. What say you're in Nigeria and I, I cut off from you? I know you're not serious. And let me tell you why. I want to buttress my point by telling the whole world how stupid a Nigerian. I want to let the whole world understand that this is the reason why white people are rightly, quite rightly, racist towards black people. Including if they are racist towards me, I don't complain. Because we are foolish. I want to prove to you that white people are justified in being racist the way they are. Because a black man is a bundle of, of stupidity. And I want to prove, I don't say, they say, he's insulting, I'm not insulting you. I'm telling you how foolish you are. 
as a nigger, the nigger in a Nigeria that you are. Let me tell you how. There's a headline in Punch newspaper. People read this headline and it makes no, it doesn't, even, it doesn't touch them, it doesn't affect them. Because they are black people, because they have no shame. I've said it to you before, for you to have class in life, you must have shame. You get me here, for you to have class in life, you must have shame. Now listen to the headline, this headline. Nigeria's petroleum imports export, sorry, exceeded their exports by 58.5 billion US dollars, OPEC. What it means is, <laughs> listen up, it means that they come to Biafra land and they take our oil on behalf of the whole Nigeria, or should I say on behalf of Britain. They take that oil outside and they sell the oil and they bring the money back. With that money they, 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 they are bringing back to us, we now proceed to import other forms of oil as well. We export crude oil. Crude oil contains everything. It contains engine oil. It contains paraffin. It contains um, kerosene. It contains um, aviation fuel. It contains um, plastics. Everything in a crude oil. It's black. It's crude oil. It contains. So the meaning of refining is when you now begin to from that same barrel of crude oil, you get kerosene. You get petrol, which is a premium spirit, motor spirit, the one you put in your vehicle, fuel. You will get diesel. You will get engine oil. You will get brake fluid. You get everything. Now, do you know what? Do you know what Nigerians are doing? I they export crude oil. They now import kerosene separately, petrol separately, the one you put in your car. They import um, aviation fuel, the one you put in aeroplane separately. The, the one they call is it paraffin or whatever it's called separately engine oil separate so you are selling a barrel of crude oil to a white man or to a refinery which some of them own which some of these fallen people own in Equatorial Guinea and in Exeter in England they export the oil to their own refineries that is how wicked they are meanwhile the four refineries they have is not working Igwocha, One, Ware, and Kaduna not working, but they're paying the workers. Now, listen to the stupidity of a black man. I want you to understand how condemned the zoo is. I want you to hate Nigeria with every passion, with every sinew in your body, because what they have done to your brain is irredeemable. You know what they do? They export one barrel of food oil for me, let's say about um, um, $40. Then, and they send that barrel of crude oil to the refiner that they own in Exeter in England. They don't refine because no refinery is working. As they send the barrel out, one crude oil, $50, the refinery in Exeter in England will refine the oil. And then the same zoo, Nigerians, these monkeys, will now say, oh, we want a barrel of um, kerosene, a barrel of um, aviation fuel. A barrel of aviation fuel is maybe thirty dollars. A, a barrel of, um, let's say, kerosene is uh, maybe about thirty dollars. Now you have spent sixty dollars buying the same thing that you could have refined and provided jobs for your people in your village. No, you export it for for forty dollars and you import only two products back for sixty dollars. Does that make sense to you? Do you now see how foolish a black man is? Do you see the reason why I say that Nigerians are animals? Do you see the reason? I don't wake up and say it. News like this drives me insane. You have refineries where you could have refined all this, your oil, and provided kerosene, even at a subsidized rate, to people to use, to generate electricity. No. They export it. And... A barrel contains many products. Don't forget, they're only importing two back. And out of that two they're bringing back, they are spending $20 more. That is why they claim they have no reserve. They claim they're borrowing money. And they are spending $58.5 billion more importing finished products when they have the refineries to do it. Now, tell me if those people are human beings or not. Do you now see how foolish the zoo is? Do you see how, do you see why I call Nigerians animals? Do you, do, you, do you understand? Do you see the reason why when somebody says I'm a Nigerian, I look at you as a, as a, as a, as a complete idiot. You have four refineries, not one, four, four, four. 
and you're sending this crude oil to a refinery as well the same thing you have in your name the same refinery in Iguacha and you're importing only two products back kerosene and aviation fuel because you don't have any refining capacity now ask yourself who is stopping the refinery in Iguacha from working who is stopping Kaduna refinery from working? Ask yourself that question. The day you answer that question, that day your eyes will open. That day you will know how stupid a black man is. That day you will know that Nigeria, Nigeria, you call it is a curse, is a burden on your soul. That is who we are. Because we speak the truth. They want to steal. They want to make your life a misery. They want to loot. But they come out and they tell you, Ibo man, it's your problem. Let's support one Nigeria. But you cannot see what they're doing. Because you are foolish. Because you're a black man or black woman. Because you're from a zoo. Your brain is not working properly. Shameful. Very, very shameful. And remember... Once they freeze doing all this nonsense, they cannot grow the economy. They don't know what political economy is all about. They don't know. They have no idea how an economy can be grown. They have no. That is why. Please, can you publish that picture of a bridge they commissioned in Adamawa? Oh, she see wood, ordinary wood. That a local capital can do. He said he built it for 10 million. And they had the temerity to put ribbon on it and to use scissors to cut the ribbon. People without. When a white man sees this, Tell me why they will not kneel down on your neck and kill you. Because as I'm looking at this thing, I am hating this world the more. There is a level of stupidity that somebody will exhibit. You will know that that person is not fit to be called a human being. That's what that. Look at the bridge. Wooden, you know wood. Ordinary carpenter can do it. They said they spent 10 million naira. The wood they use there is not up to 20,000 naira wood. And labor this very bridge will not cost up to ten thousand naira but they spent they said they spent 10 million and the idiot had the temerity to put a ribbon on this wooden bridge and to use scissors to cut it to declare it open and people are clapping he's a he's an elite he's a political leader he is elite these are the people that inhabit the zoo and you're telling me i should belong in a country with such people God punish all of you idiots. I will belong to a country with these idiots. You are insane. All of you are insane. Mad people everywhere. This UG black people as useless as ever. Where is Yoshiba Jo? Nobody can tell us where he is. This is the somebody wrote is Professor Sibajo and Jubril Al Sudan because there is no president, there is no direction, there is no economic policy. Nothing is loot as much as you like. And if the army cannot contain you, we'll send terrorists to kill you. And you fools wake up in the zoo every blessed day thinking an Igbo man is your problem or thinking that IPOB is your problem. That is how foolish some of you are. And I feel sorry for you. And uh, they are now planning to borrow more money. But they are now going to borrow more money. As they are the loan, they, they, they have collected, the, their debts have now hit 33, 33 trillion. They want to borrow money. You borrow money. You sell crude oil. You go and import kerosene and uh, PMS, premium motor spirit. Your petrol, you put in your car. You import diesel. And you go, you borrow money. You export crude oil. Then you. you I, don't, I, don't, I don't understand the chin again, but God forbid, but then, these are not human beings. These are not you, Nigerians. You're not human beings. Any Niger, any if you, anyway, they know. No idiot can come and say I'm a Nigerian. If you tell me, I'll tell you, tell you, to, to, you tell you to piss off. You're an idiot. Look at you. You're going to you borrow money. You instead of you to refine petrol and export to people to make money, you export crude oil. It, not that you don't have the capacity to refine, you do have you have four top refineries, they are not working. Somebody in Abuja said, please lock all of them up. They lock them up. You export crude oil. You import. You go and borrow money from IMF to import kerosene. To import fuel. Oh, yeah, yeah. God forbid. God forbid. Zoo people. I am too upset. Let me bring this program to a close, honestly. I I don't know. I don't know. I don't I, I, I can't. I've asked God, do you actually make black people like this or something happen? I don't know. I don't know.
but we are very very we we are useless honestly speaking black people are useless i'm being i'm being i'm just telling you the truth if you like you believe if you like that but we are useless that is why you export crude oil and you import refined or uh, refined products when you have refineries and you have the temerity to go to world bank to go to imf to borrow money to import something that you could produce at home god god forbid you people i have a few special announcements to make this very evening i am warning our people that fulani terrorists in conjunction with the zoo fulani armed forces have teamed up to take advantage of what transpired in our bar to be launching surprise attacks on our volunteers in the name of cultism because i came on air and said that what happened in our bar we are called you know what i have done the nigerian police and nigerian army have now teamed up with uh, Yala. in the evenings they will take their machete in 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 camouflage civilian um, um clothing they go out and start attacking people and killing people and like they say oh, we are being caught and that is why this very evening as i've said before that the zoo newspapers will not talk about it the gossipers we have won't talk about it but anytime we encounter them again they attacked people in obo that was yesterday if i'm not mistaken people coming from burial i am warning the british i am warning nigerian newspaper proprietors because you they, they write rubbish as usual anywhere we encounter people nigerian nigerian police claiming they are caught with machete to kill our people will kill them i'm telling you this night we'll kill them and i'm telling our volunteers anywhere you encounter any idiot that attacks you or says they are doing cultism kill that very person there and then let me go to america and justify it kill them tell them that's so kill that idiot if they come to kill you you kill them it's called self-defense let me see the idiots that will speak against it since they are blind they attacked us in obo we have the pictures we have the video of the attack they claim they are being caught because of what happened in our bar you see how fulani behave then they now go to villages they, they lay ambush they attack our people they say oh we are caught we are caught this from obo they won't go free next time there is nothing like cultism in our land Politicians and their flannel masters are using flannel terrorists and members of SARS to launch attacks against IPOB. The day we respond, I am sure that BBC Ibo and BBC Pigeon will now find time to go and interview people. They will twist it to their own advantage. In their mission to demonize IPOB, now that we are being attacked, nobody's talking. Now we are being attacked indiscriminately, nobody's talking. I hope they understand that. They have been inflicting grievous bodily harm on our people in the name of cultism. The day we respond now, the idiots, their amount will start popping like popcorn. But now, they won't see it. And I'm asking our volunteer command, anywhere, any village, where the Janja, we, the Fulani police will go and hide and say, we are doing cultism to attack our people, you will find them that very night and you will kill all of them. That same night. Let me go. Let me be, let me go to America and to EU to justify their death. Because not, this nonsense is too much. This is called self-defense. They can't keep killing us and we keep quiet. It's not, it's not just, because they will kill of us now. It's not possible. We can't do that. Can't do that. Let them copy out. That, you know what they do in the zoo? They will now copy out this part of my speech. And they will send it to foreign missions. But I'm, I, will re, I will come back on... On Wednesday to repeat what I've just said if you come to us in the name of cultism to attack us with machete to kill us we will kill you as simple as that nothing that will happen in, in in the year 2030 let it happen in 2020 what sort of rubbish is this I thank you all for listening this very night we have come to the end of our program and as always and without hesitation with every affirmation and conviction that what we are doing is right I state categorically without any equivocation that Biafra is indeed our religion. Here on radio, Biafra is where we worship because Elohim Chuku Okike Abiyama is our God. 
from me, from here, good evening. Thank <laughs> you.